Welcome to Chatterton Helping Hands. In this edition, we'll be focusing on how to use the triple beam balance. The triple beam balance is used to measure mass. Mass is the measure of the quantity of matter, basically meaning how much of a substance there is. The first step in using the triple beam balance is to make sure all the weights are on the correct side. So in this case, our weights were moved over, so we have to move them to the zero. And then at that time, we're going to hope that the line lines up at zero. For some reason, if it does not and all your weights are moved over, you can reach over to this knob back here uh, called the zero adjust knob and either move it clockwise or counterclockwise to adjust your line so it lines up. Once everything's lined up, you're ready to start measuring. You put your weights on the scale. Now there are three beams on a triple beam balance, hence it's called a triple beam balance. The first beam measures by one, so we have one, two, three, four, five. The middle beam measures by one hundredths, and the last beam measures by ten. Always start with your ones. Okay, now in this case I moved it all the way over to ten grams, and my object is still too heavy. So I'm going to move it back to zero and I'm going to use the back beam measuring by tens. Okay, I go 10 grams. Oops, I did not do it correctly. Life lesson right there. If you don't put the weight into the little grooves, it's not going to measure correctly. So I'm at 10, it's still too heavy. Now I'm going to move it over to 20, and it's too heavy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it back to 10, and then I can move over the 1 until I get the exact weight. Too heavy, move it back a little. And perfect. So I have 10 plus 1 gives me 11 grams. Let's try again. Move my weights back to zero. Make sure it lines up. Put my weights on my scale. I'm going to make it really heavy this time. Okay, once you become used to using the triple beam balance, you can look and use logic that this is too heavy for 10 grams. So you don't even need to move the ones. It's probably heavier than the tens, but I'm not sure, so I'm going to take a wild guess and say maybe it's about 90, nope, 100, nope. Okay, so this time we get to use the middle beam. So I'm going to try 100, make sure it's in the grooves, still too light, 200, too heavy. So I'm going to go back to 100. Now I'm going to move the tens. I'm at 20 and it's too light, 30 too light, 50 too heavy, move back to 40, too heavy, 30, good. So now I'm going to move the ones. Almost there but not quite, a little too light. Pretty good. Alright, so I have 100 plus 30 plus 5, so that's 135, but it's not exactly on the 5. So just like the ruler, the smaller dashes mean milli. In this case, it's milligram. So I have 135.1 or 2, I can't really tell. It looks like 2. 135.2 grams is the weight of our object. And that is how we use the triple beam balance. Welcome to Helping Hands at Chatterton. In this edition, we'll be focusing on how to read volume. Volume is defined as how much space an object takes up. There are two ways to measure volume. In solids, we use a ruler to measure volume. We do so by finding the width, length, and height and multiplying them together. So in this case, I found out that the width of my pursuit 
force <laughs> is 10.3 centimeters, the length is 17.5 centimeters, and the height, how tall it is, is about 1.4 centimeters. Now, as you notice, I multiply them together, I get 252.35. Now, afterwards, I have a unit, centimeters cubed. That is because I multiplied centimeter by centimeter by centimeter. So that's three times, so it's centimeters cubed. You always have to put your unit. Now, the other way to measure volume is if you have a liquid. Liquids are not solid, so we cannot use a ruler. Instead, we have to use a beaker. Okay, now when measuring liquids, you have to find the meniscus. What the meniscus is, is it's a dip in the liquid. Because a liquid does not stay flat, it kind of has a curve to it. If you look at my eyedropper, you'll notice that it's higher on the sides and a little lower in the middle. That's my meniscus. Okay, now when measuring volume in a liquid, you're going to use a beaker, as we already said, but you're going to have a different unit. When measuring liquids, we measure in liters. Okay, now in this case, as you see here, this is by milliliters, all right? So I go up, I find my meniscus, it's a little more than 140, it's about 141 milliliters, and that's my volume. Welcome to Helping Hands at Chatterton. In this edition, we'll be focusing on how to read volume. Volume is defined as how much space the object takes up. There are two ways to measure volume also two types. The two types are liquid volume or solid volume. We're going to start with solids. In measuring a solid, you need a ruler because you need to find the length, width, and height. So I'm going to take this PSP, Pursuit of Force, and find my length, my width, and my height, which is how tall it is. Now, I found my width is 10.3 centimeters, my length is 17.5 centimeters, and then my height is 1.4 centimeters. To find the volume from here, I multiply all three together, which gives me 252.35 centimeters cubed. Now, why is that centimeters cubed? Well, if you'll notice, after each unit I have centimeters, which you should have, always put the unit of what you're measuring. So I have centimeters, centimeters, and centimeters. So I multiply them three times, so I write it as centimeters cubed. Now this is a little different than measuring a liquid volume. A liquid volume does not have a definite shape, so I cannot use a ruler. Instead, I'll have to use a beaker. When I put the liquid in, it does not form a flat surface. Instead, it dips. This dip is called the meniscus. Okay, as you notice, it does not go straight across. It kind of curves down. You want to measure the meniscus because that is the accurate measurement of how much volume the liquid is taking up. Now if you see, we tried to get a nice picture of a meniscus. In my eyedropper, the water is curving. Is it working? That is the meniscus. Let's stop it. <laughs> I guess we'll just try another...